of started as a synthetic asset type of protocol. And now you've kind of pivoted or evolved to create a separate protocol that works on optimistic oracles or like how did that transition? Like how did working on synthetic assets previously help prepare the team and you, I guess, to, you know, provide this service to the ecosystem? They're very tied, uh, but in ways that I uh, also feel different. Like basically back in the day, we're starting this thing and we have a thesis that decentralized finance should be useful. Markets should be universally accessible. And we spent some, a lot of time and energy thinking through this Oracle problem of how to get any bit of data on a blockchain. And then we're like, how are we going to tell people about this? Like, why would they care? Um, and again, this is before DeFi existed. And the thought process then was like, well, people like tokens. Uh, let's make it so you can make a token that tracks anything using our Oracle system. Um, and these were the synthetic asset idea. And we did that. And it was kind of cool. And so it was a big learning, like dog fooding our own technology. We figured out how to improve the Oracle. We figured out how to make it work better. Um, and people thought the concept of synthetic assets was pretty cool. Like, wait, I can spin up my own token that kind of tracks anything. Um, turns out like the use, in my opinion, the actual current use case for synthetic assets is relatively limited. That's not what people are really wanting to do. The idea was cool, but the use cases are much more around, hey, I, I'm really interested in trading crypto or borrowing against my crypto or those sorts of things. Um, and so we've realized that like the real contribution we have here is actually this Oracle, which has always been centered to what we've done. We were just using synthetic assets to um, describe it, to kind of tell the ecosystem about it. And we're realizing now, look, DeFi is big enough. The Web3 use cases for this optimistic Oracle are really big. They're big enough. Um, like, let's focus on that. And uh, maybe Justin is worth getting into the use cases for this optimistic Oracle. So PolyMarket, sure. yeah, PolyMarket's a prediction market um, that previously uh, was rather uh, centralized in how they responded to events. They, uh, and they now use our optimistic Oracle very successfully to resolve and settle um, any type of prediction market response. Um, and it's worked pretty well uh, for the last six months or so. Um, uh, we built this other cross-chain bridge, which we can talk about in a second, called Across. And Across uses the optimistic oracle to verify whether a transaction happened on another chain, which is a very cool use case, right? Like, did this deposit happen on this other chain? Let's ask the oracle. We get back an answer, and it, it works um, really quite well. Uh, so it's a really cool way of doing cross-chain communications and bridging. Um, and Nomad is another optimistic bridge that shares some of the similar kind of concepts too. Um, uh, and then insurance, like what if we, we have a protocol called Sherlock uh, that, it, that uses the optimistic oracle to validate whether insurance claims should happen. And there's a whole bunch more in this space too. Like if we want to create insurance for uh, whether a given event happens somewhere, the optimistic oracle is a great, a great thing to ask. Um, I could keep going, but like the use cases here are, are pretty broad and varied. And if we really think that, uh, crypto and web three is going to grow to take over the world, which we kind of all do. That's why we're here. Um, the need for there to be truthful data around any fact to me, that seems like, uh, like an, like just a, a necessary thing. We, we got to have the primitive or the ability or the tools set to be able to get uh, any any truthful fact on a blocking. And I think the approach we built is like a really elegant way to do that. 